Welcome to this lecture on trading stock. Now, this is an important section. As you can imagine, trading stock for a lot of companies, a lot of taxpayers, trading stock is a very, very important asset to them. So we need to know the tax consequences of this will be. This is very simple though. You basically just need to understand what you need to do with opening plus closing stock. You need to know what you need to do if you purchase goods and you need to know if you dispose of trading stock. Those cover the most important aspects of it and if you can answer those you are pretty much well on your way. So guys, trading stock. First stop that you need to understand about trading stock is that trading stock is very similar to what we understand trading stock to be when you're thinking about financial accounting. It's basically what you buy and sell in a scheme of profit making for tax though. So very, very, very important scheme of profit making. Okay, so if you buy and sell cans of Coke, that's your trading stock. If you buy and sell houses, that's your trading stock. Okay, it's not the same as your capital assets which you are not selling. Now you'll see the way in which the tax act is written is that it basically calculates a cost of sales using tax rules. Now for accounting, you account for tax or for trading stock when you sell it in the cost of sales figure. But for tax, we don't use the same cost of sales figure because for accounting, you basically recognize your trading stock on the lower cost or net realizable value. Whereas we don't have a thing like net realizable value in tax. We just have market value. Okay, so that is where we cover the most of that. Now guys, again, like I say in the rest of this, it's very, very simple to understand, very simple to score a lot of marks. Here's a comedy at the bottom that you need to perform a CGT calculation, even though this capital gains tax will always be null. So basically what this just means is, is if X limited buys stock for 100,000 rands and sells it for 130,000 rands. When you do the tax, this is what you'll do. You'll have gross income, which is the sale of 130,000 rands. You'll have purchases, which is the stock that you purchased for 100,000 rands. And now because you've disposed of an asset, you must do CDT. So your proceeds will be the selling price, 130,000 rands, less any recoupment, and a recoupment, why do we deduct recoupments usually? Because it's an amount included in gross income. So less all amounts that has been included in gross income. So it's null. Base cost is the same thing. It is the cost of the stock, 100,000 rands. Less all deductions or allowances that you could have claimed. In this case, we claimed 100,000 rands as a deduction. So the base cost is null and the capital gain is null. And it will always be like that for CGT so I, or for trading stock. I even recommend that you just make a comment and say CGT equals null rands. And that should be enough. Alright guys, so simple overview. This is what we do. Opening stock. Section 22.2 is a deduction, so you deduct it from tax. Purchases, Section 11a, deduction, deducted. Closing stock, you add to your income, you add it back. So can you see? Deduction, deduction, and add it back. So that is the same concept as cost of sales. This is cost of sales. How do we calculate cost of sales? Opening stock, which is a debit. Purchases, which is a debit. So a debit in your... State of comprehensive income is a deduction. Can you see? Deduction, deduction. And closing stocks are credit for you. Basically, so you add it back. So you can see we calculating a type of cost of sales. So let's look at our definitions. What are the definitions of trading stock? It says trading stock includes anything produced, manufactured, constructed, assembled, purchased, or in any other manner acquired by a taxpayer for the purposes of manufacture, sale, or exchange by the taxpayer or on behalf of the taxpayer. So they say if you buy anything or you make anything which you're then going to use, sell or use to, uh, when you're making something. So for example, let's say I make cans and then I use those same cans to make cans of Coke. Right. That cans will also be trading stock. Or anything with the proceeds of the disposal 
of which forms or will form part of the taxpayer's gross income. Now that's very important. This means the, then, thus, if you are in a scheme of profit making, you have trading stock. Now, this does not mean, please understand what I'm saying here, it does not mean if I have nothing, so let's say I render tax services to people, and that's my gross income. I don't have trading stock then, but let's say I buy a house and sell a house, and then buy a house and sell a house, buy a house, do it a number of times, and SAR says I'm in a scheme of profit making. That buying of a house is then trading stock for me. That's basically what it refers to. They say otherwise then in the following, in terms of paragraph J of gross income definition, that's the most important one for you to understand there. And this is where you make your own trading stock. And we'll talk about that a little bit further on. Trading stock, right. They also tell you any consumable stores and spare parts. That is also included in trading stock. Spare parts for financial accounting is quite often capitalized. Here it's trading stock. But it does not include a foreign currency option contract or a forward exchange contract. Right. So none of those. So please note guys, there's a comment here. Spare parts form part of your trading stock. 